day three of the of the build going brilliantly yesterday i thought was a brilliant day having so much done and the guys really got tucked in and it's uh, for those of you uh, who watch my shows from other parts of the world apart from australia these guys are true blue aussies and the way i know that is that they talk about beer and, and the drinking thereof quite often which means they are not imposters what a great couple of days i've had with these guys and uh, they've taken it completely seriously and just dedicated the whole little workshop um and it's been it's been absolutely brilliant and i completely trust uh peter he knows his stuff there's no question that he knows his stuff and is very familiar and yesterday he was banging out these bushes we had a burning bush he was worried that i was going to start going all biblical on him and uh, we got a lot done. Suspension is now done. The eng all the engine check work is done. All the oil changes are done. We have to do the final flush of the fuel lines and change the last of the fuel filters. Then check. We're now going to do the final checks on the carburetors. I'm going to refit the air filters, and we're going to, you know, do final checks on the, the running of the engine. Uh, cooling system's done. Uh, we're we're close to being finished very close to being finished so what I want to do today also is I brought in a whole lot of stuff that um, for the preparation of the trip and I'm going to start installing that into the vehicle and I think that I'm going to be finished with prep work by the end of today let's see how it goes What began as a quest to find and purchase, no matter its state, my Range Rover that I sold 30 years ago has led me to this. Sleeping the night, curled on the back seat, to be woken by the Australian bush calls and being reacquainted with the familiar smell of gear oil. This series of videos is that story. I'm Andrew St. Pierre White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts of the world. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe and remember to hit that notifications bell to make sure you catch our weekly videos. phase final phase about to start and you can see here the uh, the emptiness of the box uh, we're not fitting those uh, rear rotors don't need to clutch we're not going to touch um, these uh, steering components don't need them there's nothing wrong with them at all they're still nice and well greased no play and um, just a few other little bits and pieces to finish up and then mechanically we want to do some very thorough checking and then we're really ready to give it a run the header tank has been replaced and now a check of the fuel lines and filter comes next just a fuel filter assembly the filter itself looks very clean clean fuel and yeah bowl's been cleaned before so more indicators that this rangey has been well maintained but we'll put in a new filter anyway of course what is more difficult to determine is how well it's been looked after in the long term the engine had a rebuild about six months ago but the rest of it didn't in the spirit of um, not fixing anything that isn't already broken we're just now inspecting the uh, spark plugs to see what condition they're in and if they look like they've been in the car for a long time, we will replace them. Uh, uh, or we won't. Oh, that's nice. Hasn't, that's been, run, hasn't been running rich or nothing. No, that's, a, that's, that's like perfect. Yeah. Burning very good. Yeah. On the face of it, its owners have cared for it no quite well. Stop. We are now running fuel through the lines to see if it's contaminated. 
clean. Clean, clean, clean. Yep. Clean, clean fuel. Couple of little bits in it. Nothing, really. I'll just speak off. It's good. At least we got that out of the fuel. Cleaning the battery terminals and attaching the battery cable that I've run to the back. This will run my fridge and camera battery charging equipment on the trip. So that's a bit of excess of uh, length because I can now put the battery anywhere I like and I will probably locate it behind the driver's seat. So I've got plenty of length. All I need to do now is fit the Anderson on there. We are getting close to an engine run. A new oil filter has been fitted and new oil put in. Right, go for it. And then what we can do is we can time it for a premium. So I'll time it to about um, 10 degrees advanced to top dead center. Okay. And then we run a premium fuel in it. Otherwise, okay. if I time it to 10 degrees advanced to top dead center and you run like a 91 octane, yes. then it will ping under labor. Okay. Yeah. But we'll, we'll tune it to premium. It's a better quality fuel, cleaner burning anyway, so. And make more power. <laughs> Right, the 40 amp DC to DC charger that will charge the battery in the back is a BC DC Red Arc 25 amp charger. Test run time. I've asked Pete if he will drive. He'll have a better chance of hearing or feeling anything out of place from the driver's seat. Themselves. Oh yeah. <laughs> what do you reckon my chances are of getting to Perth without having to do any mechanical work? Yeah, I reckon it's pretty high. Pretty high? Yeah. I, um, I reckon you'll make it, no worries. It feels good. It's running well. So, I uh, can't see why not. So I let Pete drive, I wanted him to feel the knocks and the bumps and everything and tell me if there was anything unusual. There was nothing unusual, in fact the car ran really well. Apart from the low RPM, it's a little bit rough and Pete thinks it's um, too, running too lean. Going to work on that now, but basically we're done. I am now going to put in some sound insulation. Uh, the gearbox isn't as noisy as my old one, but it's pretty noisy. So I'm going to be doing that. I had that sent up. Um, car builders in New South Wales sent some stuff for me to do that. I'm going to put that in now and start packing it for the trip. The sound deadening mat goes in first. It's a butyl rubber with an aluminium top layer that's self-adhesive. I've cut it in pieces and laid them down before I stick them. So supplied in the kit is a, a knife and a roller and some aluminium tape. Then I lie a mass noise liner under the carpet. These two together are designed for maximum noise suppression that should kill the LT95's dreadful whine. I feel as if we're wrapping things up. I'd like to take a look at the headlamps, but I think what I might do this evening is uh, head to the motel early, give it a short run, 
pack it for the trip and then maybe return tomorrow morning with any things that I feel need doing. I'm a full day ahead of schedule, which means tomorrow I'll have time to sort out some details. Just about done. Uh, last little upgrade to the headlamps. Uh, because my permits uh, don't allow me to drive at night because the vehicle is unregistered. I'm not expecting to, but uh, there might be an, an emergency or something. I need to plan for any contingency, so um, I'm upgrading the, uh, the globes. But I still wanted to look uh, original, so I'm not going to do anything fancy. But the standard lights will be pretty close to completely useless. Okay, something's wrong. The low high transfer lever has come loose. We weren't doing anything, we were just mucking about with the carpets. I was literally minutes from rolling out of here and the uh, low transfer gearbox has jumped out of high range and we cannot get back into either high or low range. It's stuck in neutral. We've got to find out what's, what's going on. Just as well this happened now and not in a couple of days time. as if you're going in the light. Okay, go back the other way. Yeah, that shaft is retained on this side. So take it up to what the What do you reckon? Um, the selector shaft that goes through the uh, transfer case is is floating now so it's um basically you've got your selector fork and then you select the link and then when the whole selector shaft floats back it's missing it like that so it can't put it in the low put it in the high so it's retained on the left hand side of the transfer case so we're going to take it up in the air and see if we can sort it out and the kind of it's an internal if it's an external linkage I, problem i think it is i think it and the retainer which is i think it's just a roll pin is on the outside as well so we don't have to go in. See that's got a hole in there? See how that's been floating? I reckon it's completely, see that? It's missing like a cotter pin and like a spring type washer. And that, a, whole, and that whole selector fork is just floating back and forward. Yeah there's a hole in it. Yeah, yeah like something meant to be there, nothing's there. Yeah. Uh, did you want to get up in there and have a look at that either? There is the other side where there would be a handbrake. Yeah. Right yeah. Can it. yeah. So that selector yeah. floating back and forth. You can push that in through. So we find something that where is whatever was in it? Or you no, reckon it's it never was. We've just been, been lucky and every time we haven't touched it. Yeah. So you guys are the first one to touch it and you pull the carpet yeah. out the high load. Yeah. So you've disturbed it, so that's why you've noticed the um that issue. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. It's barely nothing in it now. <laughs> there you go. Brand new. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to do it. Oh, that. I had visions of us having to pull the gearbox out. Turned out, it turned out to be a very, very simple solution, one that I could not have done on my own because I wouldn't have known what to look for. Those of you who have owned Range Rovers, well, the early ones anyway, you'll notice something extremely familiar. I don't need to tell you what it is. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the fact that it is down at the back. You put a packet of peanuts in the back of this thing and the back will start to drop. And the early Range Rover is not a big vehicle. I mean, it's only this high. It's only as tall as I am. 
it's 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 quite spacious inside because it's very you know square sided it's not a big car by any stretch and none of the guys thought I would get it all in but I did all right so last night thinking about fuel consumption how am I going to get across and will I need to carry extra fuel uh, in theory no I won't need to carry extra fuel but I put in 20 liters remember uh, last time on the way here ran out of fuel almost uh, put in exactly 20 liters didn't want to put in more but in case we had to drain the tank uh, we've probably spilt a liter on the ground maybe two and a couple of test drives and it's empty already I've got to do some test runs I can't know that I'm going to get 450 kilometers to a tank which is what I got with my old one and today I actually have a free day I'm not uh, I'm not I mean we, we I was going to work on the vehicle all day today and I had tomorrow Friday as the contingency and it looks like I'm going to need neither I can't leave early because I've got a meet and greet for my Patreon supporters both here in Melbourne that's on Sunday and then on Tuesday in Adelaide in South Australia so I can't leave early uh, and I have restrictions with my permits that I mean I've got to stick to them so the the days on which I am on the road heading west are set I can't change them so what am I going to do now a day in Melbourne maybe it would be a good time to spend trying to do something about the very noisy interior but first get some fuel and then I'm going back to uh, Rangy Heaven uh, might do a few last little checks but really not much more we can do and then Yeah. <coughs> Say goodbye and then work out what I'm going to do with the rest of my day. Motor is definitely running better at low RPM. It was almost stalling before. I was battling this while I was battling a little bit with it. It kept on wanting to stall at low RPM. It was rough. It's much better now. Morning. Morning. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of bit of bit of stuff. One for one for you. Grab a sticker. Oh, hey. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, all right. There you go. Legend. Yeah, right. right. Thanks, mate. Alrighty. Cheers. Much nicer to drive. Is it? Yeah. Beautiful. I used to battle at low RPM. I used to have to slip the clutch a bit sometimes mm -hmm. to get going because yeah. it was so rough in, uh, when it was low RPM. Yeah. Uh, it's much better. Beautiful. It takes off much quicker. Um, I didn't drive very far, as you know, but yep. it's, it's, I can feel it's better. That's I can feel it. So just by reaching in the fuel mixtures up a bit, yep. it's just made it more drivable. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yep. That's good news. Good news. So I don't. I, I mean, yeah, that's it. I guess we we're, we're, we're done. Yeah, you reckon mm. that's it? Mm. I reckon you should be right. Mm. Bit of mechanical uh, sympathy. Just remember, it's a forty-year-old car that you're yeah. driving over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I I am guilty of mechanical sympathy. Probably a yeah. little bit too much. Will you imagine if you had to run <laughs> that to jog across? I. You, <laughs> you mean you mean like this? No, no. I mean if you had to jog that. Yes. It's the same sort of yeah. ordeal your car's going to go yeah. through. So if you keep that in mind, you'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just baby it over there. I think it'll, it'll be fine. Mm. Yep. Mm. Yeah. All right. I've got Let's your phone number if I, if I need help. Mm? Yeah. Let's live this long. So. Mm. Yeah, definitely. If you break down halfway across for some reason, give us a call. We'll come out. All right. <laughs> we'll part of the adventure, eh? You heard that, eh? <laughs> That's it. We've got the support vehicle in there, the Discovery. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Okay. But, uh, I think you'd be right. We've pretty much covered all the uh, all the main things that would have been problematic 
yeah. on, on your journey. Yeah. And all the little things, you've got all the spare parts in the back, you've got some tools now, bits and pieces. I think you'll be fine. Mm. I'm feeling quite confident, yeah. to be honest with you. Well, I'm, yep. fe I'm feeling confident yeah. for you, so yeah, I think you'll be right. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. The, old, the old Rangy would do it. It's a good example mm. of an old Rangy, so there's no reason why I shouldn't make it. Mm. Having said goodbye to the guys, not five minutes later... I'm not even five minutes. I got fuel and uh, I suddenly heard this very loud cracking sound um, in the, in from inside. It feels like it's coming from over the here. That's not... This is not a good start. Not, uh, promising at all. Uh, and also, uh, the fuel tank is, the fuel filler is leaking petrol and I didn't fill it up. I filled it to three quarters and it's leaking petrol. Uh, I gotta go back to Pete, ask him. Okay, not what I wanted right now, but better now than in the middle of the Nala ball. Horrible noise. Sorry you can't get rid of me, but there's a horrible noise. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe and click the notifications bell so you don't miss our weekly videos.